Good afternoon. This is Father Gordon Anderson from St. Albans Anglican Church in Joppa, Maryland. It is September the 7th, Tuesday, here in Maryland, and this is part of our continuing online teaching series on the seven sacraments. We've had quite a break since the last uh, session, which was on holy baptism several weeks ago. It's probably been almost a month ago. I've had a few vacations and I've been out of town, but now I am back and I do want to uh, finish this series. This will be, be today a very brief catechesis on confirmation. So I have just a few things to say here. If you want to grab your 1928 prayer book and follow along, we are on page 296 and we are looking at today the Sacrament of Confirmation. So the Sacrament of Confirmation is one of the sacraments of initiation. The Sacraments of Initiation. And these are the three sacraments that initiate us into the body of Christ. They are Baptism, Confirmation, and Holy Eucharist. So we looked at Baptism and today we're looking at the second of these, Confirmation. What Confirmation is, is explained on page 296 in the Book of Common Prayer. The order of confirmation, or laying on of hands upon those that are baptized and come to years of discretion. So that is what it is, the laying on of hands by the bishop upon those who have come to the years of discretion. That is uh, typically a child who was baptized as an infant um, and is now perhaps a, a elementary school or a teenager. Um, and then the bishop lays hands on the child and prays for him or her to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So what confirmation is, is you could just say it very simply, the giving of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we see this explained quite clearly and succinctly in the rite itself, which again is in the prayer book. So if you look here on page 296, um, the priest or uh, minister presenting the confirmand, a confirmand is a person being confirmed, uh, presenting the confirmand to the bishop reads a passage of scripture, which is from uh, Acts chapter 8. When the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost." So that is important to understand. The bishop is not just laying hands on the confirmand to uh, tell them, well done, or you're a great guy, or a wonderful gal, let me slap you on the back. He is laying hands on them so they can then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So even though it does not say in the title of the rite, the giving of the gift of the Holy Spirit, when you read the passage that immediately begins the service, you see that that is what it is about. So the rite continues where the bishop asks the confirmand if they agree with and renew the vows that were made in their name at holy baptism. And, holy, and again, this is presupposing that these are children uh, being confirmed here, but of course you can also have adults that are confirmed. In holy baptism, if a child is baptized uh, as an infant, he or she obviously cannot make those vows and answer them. So what happens is the sponsor makes those vows in the child's name, promising to raise that child in the faith. Now the child has come to his or her years of discretion, and that faith which was pledged in their name is confirmed by the child, by the confirmand. Uh, the bishop asks, do you agree with this? Do you accept this? Do you renew the vow that was made uh, in your name or that you made? Because there are some people, of course, that make it themselves. And the person answers, I do then follows a question by the bishop, 
Do ye promise to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. And then comes um, one of the most critical parts of the rite, the bishop prays for the giving of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is on page 297. The bishop says, Almighty and ever-living God, who has vouchsafed to regenerate these thy servants by water and the Holy Ghost, and has given unto them forgiveness of all their sins, strengthen them, we beseech thee, O Lord, with the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, and daily increase in them thy manifold gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and ghostly strength, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and fill them, O Lord, with the spirit of thy holy fear, now and forever. Amen. So that is the prayer for the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that the bishop prays that the confirmands would receive. The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are taken from uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 11. Uh, you hear them specifically in 11 verse 2, but the whole chapter is worth looking at. And again, those seven gifts that we receive in confirmation, the strengthening gift of the Holy Spirit, are wisdom, understanding, counsel, ghostly strength, knowledge, godliness, and holy fear. So those are the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. And then after having uh, prayed that prayer, the bishop lays hands on each child and says, Defend, O Lord, this thy child with thy heavenly grace, that he or she may continue thine forever, and daily increase in thy Holy Spirit, more and more, until he come unto thy everlasting kingdom. Now, it's very important to say that the bishop is the one who administers the sacrament of confirmation. In some traditions, uh, the parish priest is allowed to administer it, um, that is uh, an administrative difference, if you will, that I will not get into right here. But in our traditional classical Anglican tradition, it is the bishop himself who administers this sacrament. And that is because if you go to the passage in Acts of the Apostles, who is it who is uh, giving... The okay, we got disconnected there. I hope you're all still watching. He is giving the gift through the ministry of the apostles, the first bishops, Peter and John. I'm, I'm using hand motions because I notice all of these YouTube stars use hand motions all the time to sort of keep people interested. So I, I hope this helps you stay more interested, okay? Got to tell a little joke there or it's not going to be Father Gordon Anderson. Um, so after the gifts are given uh, by uh, the, by God the Father, uh, through the ministry and the office of the bishop. Um, the rite ends very simply with the Our Father um, and two additional prayers and a blessing. There is on the bottom of page 299, the third rubric. The rubric is the small print with the paragraph sign next to it. There shall none be admitted to the Holy Communion until such time as he be confirmed or ready and desirous to be confirmed. And that follows the pattern which is clearly laid out uh, in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 277 in the rite of baptism, that you have to be confirmed before you are admitted to the Lord's Supper in the Holy Communion. Now, this rubric states that there are exceptions to that rule, uh, if the person is ready and desirous to be confirmed, he or she may be admitted to communion uh, by the rector. And that's typically what is followed uh, here at St. Albans and in many of our parish churches. So that is the order of confirmation, the second of the sacraments of initiation. Um, this sacrament, I will close with this, a former colleague of mine, uh, he's now retired, uh, once pointed out that confirmation is the ordination service of the laity. It is the ordination of the laity. And what he meant by that is if you look at the rite of confirmation and you compare it to one of the ordination rites in the prayer book, diaconate, priesthood, or episcopate, 
you see a lot of similarities. A candidate is presented to the bishop for this uh, blessing or for this grace and charism. A passage of scripture is read, uh, confirming what we are about to do. Um, then uh, vows are made by the ordinand, or in this case, the confirmand. Then the bishop lays hands on the confirmand in ordination, the ordinand, and prays for the gift of the Holy Spirit for that particular function. So this is the ordination of the laity. When you are confirmed, you are empowered by the Holy Ghost to live the Christian life in its fullest, to be protected against the wiles and temptations and snares of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And one of the most edifying things that we can do from time to time is open up your Book of Common Prayer in the quiet of your home and reread the Order for Confirmation and remember that you have been confirmed and strengthened by our Lord Jesus Christ, that his spirit literally indwells you and he is going to bring you to eternal life through him. So we will leave that there. Please uh, drop me a line if you uh, have a question or a comment. And thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye now.